uh, to, to uh, proceed the uh, public hearing, I'd like to give a uh, summary of the, uh, uh, the tax levy, the recommended tax levy, and, and the, the, some of the basis behind the recommendation. So to begin, uh, the timetable of this, the tentative levy was presented to the Board of Education on November 9th. Uh, the notice of the public hearing was put in the paper on November 27th. And public hearing is going to be the first agenda item, and later on in the board meeting, the board will approve the final tax letter. Uh, and then by December 31st, the last Tuesday of the month, the tax levy must be filed with Cook County. The tax levy in your district is as critical as the tax levy in just about any district in Illinois because of your dependency on local tax, uh, real, uh, local revenues rather than state and federal revenues. You can see that. Uh, over 75% of your revenues come from real estate taxes. So the decision on the levy in your district is much different than the decision on a levy for another district that I may work with that only gets 20% of their money from local sources. Uh, so this was a breakdown of your local sources. And I do also want to point out that about 2% of your revenues uh, last year, was a little bit higher than the prior year, comes from the TIF rebate, which is really taxes that are paid into the TIF, the surplus taxes that have been that, that are just released by the TIF and, and distributed to the school district. Uh, the major issue uh, related to this tax levy is that uh, at this moment in time, your, the two remaining TIFs in Oak Park are expired, and uh, so so basically, this is a decision that couldn't have been made. It's, been, it's existed. The one levy, excuse me, the one TIF existed for 24 years and the other one for 36 years. So um, there's about $113 million uh, at, as of last year. The number's going to change one more time because it'll be a new number come out. But it's approximately $113 million of new property. The value of the property when it started versus what it's worth now that is going to come due. And the district has one opportunity, which is this tax levy to capture that money. All the taxes that were being paid, the taxes were being paid previously, they were going to the TIF fund at the village. Now you have the opportunity to, in essence, shift those taxes directly to the school district. Um, it's estimated that the dollar amount generated from that uh, recouping of that uh, TIF exploration will be about $5.3 million to Oak Park 97. Uh, the reason why it's so critical in terms of a one-term decision is this, is the 2018 levy, uh, uh, the, again, this excludes the bonds, but, but this is, uh, this, this is tonight's, is about the limiting funds. But, but about $72 million was your tax levy this year. And if you didn't capture the tax levy, excuse me, if you didn't capture the expiring tip in the $5.3 million, that number would increase from last year by basically CPI. And if you did decide to do that, you would be able to get that CPI increase plus the $5 million. And that then becomes your base going forward for CPI. So that sets the trajectory of your revenues going forward. So that's why the decision is so significant. If you do not capture the $5.3 million, you lose the optionality to capture that money in future years. You're not making the commitment to capture the money every year. You're making a commitment tonight if you want to capture the money this year but then it gives you the optionality to capture in the future. So in making, the, in making your levy decision, a couple things that need to be considered is how does the, uh, how does the tax levy impact the long-term financial condition of the district? And more specifically, how does the decision impact fund balance policy of the district, which is to maintain three to six months worth of fund balance reserves? The second factor to consider is how will it impact the long-term quality of the educational services in your district? Uh, will the district be able to maintain fund balance reserves targets without, impact, without adversely impacting staffing the program? And then the third factor to consider is, is on the condition, how will the impact the decision impact the condition of the district's facilities? Uh, will the district be able to address critical repairs in its buildings? while maintaining fund balance reserve targets and maintaining high level of educational services. 
all these things cost money. It costs money to maintain the three to six month reserves. It costs money to maintain the quality of education and the type of programming that the community expects. And it costs money to maintain the buildings, which have some critical needs that are going to be considered going forward. So um, to, to, to give an example of uh, what how I, I project uh, the decision would impact the district under three scenarios. Um, the three scenarios that I'm looking at are this. One is to capture all the available new tax dollars from the expiring TIF, the $5.3 million. Scenario two is to capture $3 million from the expiring TIF, which, which would, in essence, replace what, what essentially has been your average TIF surplus that you receive from Oak Park. Because that's going to go away uh, now that the TIF is done. And the third is to not capture any of the TIF expiration. Instead of, instead of capturing the $5.3 million, uh, keep the levy the same and, in essence, provide the savings, shift the savings to the taxpayers. Um, the major assumptions that were used in the projections are that the district is going to get minimal new revenue growth from the state and federal sources. Very confident in that projection. Mm -hmm. The state of Illinois, has been, uh, the district has received and is expected to receive very little money based on your ranking of your school district within the evidence-based funding model. And the district, uh, state and federal revenues have essentially been flat historically. So that piece of the pie is going to remain flat. So if the district wants additional revenues from the school district, excuse me, additional revenues within its, within its budget, unfortunately, the only source of revenue that could possibly grow are real estate taxes. The projections assume that expenditure growth is going to be 2.1% annually. That's what I use in the projections. Now, that is a fairly aggressive assumption uh, because uh, historical growth has been about 4.2%. But, but the district does have a different collective bargaining agreement. Um, there's some retirements. Uh, and and, and, and there's, uh, the district would have to have a commitment to keeping fund uh, expenditure growth at somewhere close to revenue growth in order to make this work. Uh, the third assumption is no property tax cap legislation. Uh, I was at a meeting yesterday uh, with two uh, school lobbyists in, Il uh, in Springfield, and I asked the question, what's the probability of a property tax cap for I, said, I actually specifically said, is there more than a 50% chance there's going to be a property tax, tax freeze? And the person laughed at me and said, oh, it's going to, there's going to, there definitely is going to be a property tax freeze. I'm not saying that's going to happen. Um, but the presumption is, is that in order to get the, uh, in, in order to get the uh, constitutional amendment on the graduated income tax to pass, there's going to have to be a sweetener to the state saying, if you vote for this, then there will be a property tax. So that, 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 that's a distinct possibility that at least has to be factored into your decision. Because at that, at that point in time, given the fact that you're a school district without growth in state and federal revenues, if your real estate taxes are frozen, then your revenue growth is zero. And again, I was at a school district yesterday uh, giving a presentation, and, and they get a lot of money from the state, and they're getting a lot of growth from the state. If their real estate taxes freeze, they're still going to have an increase in revenues because the state is likely going to keep pumping money into the evidence-based funding. Um, the, third, uh, uh, the, the third part of the assumption is that $33.5 million of major non-referendum capital expenses, which have been identified, and these are expenses that are beyond those expenses that are uh, going to be paid for with the bond proceeds, the referendum bond proceeds, that they would be paid with fund balance reserves rather than having to issue debt service extension bonds. So the district currently has outstanding debt service extension based bonds. There's two more years left of about a $1.4 million levy. This projection is built on the fact that once that goes away, then, the, then there's no, the only outstanding debt would be the referendum debt. So scenario one, this is revenues versus expenditures. Um, and um, Scenario one, the district would have surpluses in each of the projection years, which includes this budget and the next five years. Because 2020 is this year. 2020 has not, not, nothing to do with this. So we're projecting a surplus this year. Uh, 2000, with, with, the, with the scenario of recapturing the TIF, 
I also project that the district would have a surplus in each of the five projection years. And in scenario number three, where the district decides to not capture any of the TIF surplus, the district would begin deficit spending in around 2023, expenditures higher than revenues. Uh, this is what fund balances would look like when you, when you, when you combine the revenues, the surpluses or deficits with the, with the expected spendage, expenditures of the $33.5 million capital. So, so that's embedded in this. So under this scenario, which is scenario number one of capturing the taxes, uh, uh, capturing the, all the taxes in a TIF, um, the projection model shows right now, again, under the assumption you keep expenditure growth at 2.1%, that you would be able to address $33.5 million in capital projects continue to provide the same level of services that you provide now to, to your students, and still be, although barely, within your three to six month fund balance target. So you would accomplish all the objectives with that scenario. If the scenario is scenario two, where the board decides to capture just the three million dollars, then um, the district would not run out of money during the projection period, but would be below their three month reserve uh, by before uh, by 2024. So what that means is this: is that the district would then have a decision if it was if the if the board of education made a decision that they were going to maintain their three to six month fund balance reserve, they would have to either convert to borrowing money for the capital projects, abandon capital projects, or go to referendum, or make expenditure reductions. Um, be, uh, be, beyond 2.1% revenue growth. So the reductions could be, the, the growth in revenues has, would have to be significantly lower. If the district decides to not capture any of the TIF, the district is projected to run out of money by 2025 if they borrow, uh, if they use fund balance reserves to pay for the capital projects. Under this scenario, um, the district would be uh, below their, their target of three months worth of reserves by 2022, and they would be in a situation where they would have to, again, reduce expenditures, um, borrow for uh, uh, the capital projects, or go to referendum. So the recommended tax levy, um, which, is the, which is the recommendation, the unanimous recommendation that I was asked to present from Fork, because this was presented to Fork as well, is uh, well, first of all, uh, the, the, the CPI for, for the tax levy that you're considering for tonight is 1.9%. Uh, that compares to 2.1% each of the two prior years. Um, the recommended tax levy is to maximize um, the, the, uh, um, the, the allowable dollars that the district could receive. So in 2018, the tax extension was 72 million 742. Um, the, the recommended tax levy would capture that amount that they got last year, the 1382 which is approximately the CPI increase which you're entitled to under the tax cap legislation, the additional $5.3 million from the expiring TIF, and about three to $400 of additional money from other new taxable property in the school district. Um, outside Outside, again, it's the reason why we use four different, four different uh, uh, buckets of money. Outside of the TIF and outside of new property taxes, the increase would be 1382000 the CPI increase. So, so, so the, the, in, in aggregate, the, the, the taxpayers of, uh, that, that work, the $5.3 million of the new money comes from the TIF, money that was being paid to the village. $382,000 comes from new taxable property that people pay new taxes, and the existing taxpayers would see approximately a one point, would see a one point, not approximately, would see a 1.9% increase in aggregate. Some would be a little higher, some would be a little bit lower because their values shift relative to others, but in aggregate, it would be a 1.9% increase. The breakdown of the levy request is as follows. I'm not going to read the numbers, but you can see that the majority of the money goes into the education fund, 
and the, the rest of the levy is split, split out based on uh, bu budgeted needs within the different funds. Uh, the estimated impact to the district of this tax levy is that the district would, see, would receive approximately $7.1 million of new taxes, uh, revenues into the district, which is about a 9.7% of your uh, uh, non-bonded interest fund tax levy. And, but the district would lose approximately $2.3 million, $2 million in TIF surplus dollars. Um, that will offset a little bit of the increase. So the net increase of the district would be four to $5 million. The net impact to a uh, taxpayer outside of the TIF or the new property area, assuming a $400,000 market value home, is that their taxes, their ta the portion of the tax bill related to School District 97 will go up 1.9%, um, which translates into an increase of about $90 annually for that homeowner. The overall impact of the le uh, recommended levy uh, it, it will allow the district to maintain fund balance reserve targets through 2025 fiscal year, so it would satisfy that uh, <coughs> objective within the, uh, within the long-term financial projection. It would significantly delay the need to have a good referendum. It would allow the district to address facility needs without issuing additional debt, and it will better position the district to absorb the impact of adverse legislation, including a property tax freeze, and pension shift le legislation, which, be, which is being contemplated right now. That was discussed yesterday, and there's about 100 school districts right now based on the current proposal that's gonna be presented in January. That would be losers, and my understanding is it's predominantly in Northern Cook County, and, I, and, and, and so I don't know if it's gonna hit your district, but um, it, it, it's, this, this area is the one that would have the, the most impact, but I, I don't know if that's gonna have an impact. But it does put the district in a situation, again, w if you get into the situation where you're at your three month reserve and you're breaking your three month reserve and something like a property tax freeze comes in and you don't have any acorns stored up to address that, or you don't have acorns stored up to address your, uh, your facilities, then you have to make some, some even more dramatic decisions than, or more significant decisions than whether to capture the tip. Then you, then you have to talk about some major things that could have an, an adverse impact um, on, on, on the services that you provide your students or have an adverse impact to the community in terms of having to go to referendum and get those big bumps in taxes, which I understand the community is trying to avoid. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Once the decision is made not to capture it, it's a permanent decision. Right, but if we capture it this year and then, nope, the, the constitutional amendment, for example, passes on the graduate income tax and it is not accompanied by property taxes, the next board could say crisis averted and choose Absolutely. not to capture it but not have a permanent loss of the option. Absolutely. Um, okay, and that, as far as the, we talk about revenues and the increases mm. of CPI. Well, you mentioned our contracts. Our contracts are all tied to CPI. Mm -hmm. um, and with some increases for people, teachers get promoted along the way up until they hit tenure. Um, with regards to the capturing of the CPI revenue, how what percentage of that goes back out the door for the staff? So obviously, sal I mean, salaries are the predominant. I mean, the, 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 Part of that question is this: is that, is, is that, uh, you know, going back to a, a simple point, but a, but a relevant point. Your collective bargaining agreement contracts go up. Um, special education tends to go up. At least at CPI, tend to go up. Um, and if you want to maintain what you have, there has to be an increase in revenues. I mean, it, it would be nice if there didn't have to be, but there has to be an increase in revenues. And it would also be nice if the increase in revenues didn't come from. The community, but unfortunately, 
it, it, it does come from the community. So, so the way I view your, your point in history now is that you have a unique opportunity uh, from the combined uh, tax increase and, and, the, and, and, and the TIF money moving over to your school district. And I know that was always embedded in to the long-term assumptions going forward this, this day. Um, that, that, you, you, that, that, that puts you in the opportunity or position to hopefully borrow, I should me, hopefully address your capital projects without issuing debt. And again, if you issue debt to pay for your capital projects, then you're gonna have millions of dollars of interest costs embedded into the tax line. So if you could use fund balance reserves, that will be a long-term savings for the community. Um, so, so, so to be able to address the capital projects with your fund balance reserves and maintain programs and, and over a six year period still would be, would be within your three to six month reserve target, that's the opportunity you're afforded now. Um, and, I, and I think that, that, that that's why you know, every year as we do the long term financial projection, we have to keep having that goal of trying to maintain three to six months of, of fund balance reserve, balance budgets in perpetuity if at all possible and, 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 and hopefully prolong uh, absent something dramatic in Springfield, hopefully prolong the referendum for many, many years. So I have a follow-up question on the debt. If we were to, after the three million that we've been getting and not capture the 2.3 million, mm -hmm. and then we were to issue DSEB bonds next year to handle those capital needs for the same 2.3 million, mm -hmm. but we pay interest not like, what is the long-term interest if sure. we were to do the DSEB bonds on the 33 million instead of using so, so I asked, I, I asked your, um, your, your bond person to uh, run a scenario of borrowing $33.5 million and having level debt payments over 20 years. Um, and the total interest cost of doing that is, is about $15.8 million. And that would be passed on to the taxpayer? Yeah, that would be embedded within their tax bills. Yes. Um, this, this is the most cost effective. If you could do this, if you could pay for the capital projects without borrowing, it's the most cost-effective way to do it. Can you repeat that number, please? You said the interest or the... So, so to generate $33 million, the, the aggregate debt service, which, which is, i.e., tax, future tax levies, is $48.8 million. So $33 million is principal, and $15.8 million is paying back the interest on the principal. And then you also mentioned that the bond... Estimated. The bond is going to retire in two years, and that's mm -hmm. 1.4 million. Mm -hmm. So that, in those two years, that's when, that, the taxpayers will feel if that in two years. The, 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 the numbers that I showed would, would reflect that that $1.4 million tax levy for the bonds would go away permanently, not through the 2025 projection period. The tax increase is greater than next year, than, it, than the, it would not it would reverse anything that would be a benefit from this year by what the said, from what I understand. And I just want to make sure that I'm understanding that correctly from a dollar perspective. And DSEP bonds are non referendum bonds, so they get issued at the table for cap these right. So I just want to understand if. The two point three million dollars is mm. the amount of the difference in the tip that we were talking about, right? Mm. Between the two million and the five million. But if we were to issue DSEB, is if we issue more than two point three million dollars in DSEB, we reverse that decision very next year. Right. So okay. so that's what I want to Right. Say. If you if you if you borrow for the capital projects and um, drop and, and, and catch it you know, partial TIF, then, then yes, that would, that would overcome the number. And we would likely have to issue in bonds more than 2.3 million. The, 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 the annual debt service? Yes. Uh, it's <coughs> 3.5 million. So the, pre, the cost would, for taxpayers would go up more than the 2. If we don't take the 2.3 now, and we issue D7 next year, we would issue 3.7 million, which means that would be a tax increase. If, if your question is if, if the, if the Board of Education decided to do the, the partial Ketra, yes. the partial uh, money funds from the TIF, mm -hmm. and issue, issue debt for the $33.5 million, yes. would the aggregate amount be higher? Yes. And the answer is yes. Yeah.
starting next year? Uh, it depends when you issue the plans. That was my question. Any other comments or feedback before we go? I, um, I was curious, and I don't know if this was somewhere in the paperwork. Um, I know we've talked about the, the tax increase would be roughly um, $90 for the D97 portion of the tax bill. Um, what if, in theory, if we were to reject all the, the uh, taking the TIF money, how much would people get in terms of like tax relief? So the, great question. So the general rule of thumb for District 97 is $1 million of taxes equals about $70, 65 to $70 of, of money. So uh, 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 a one, so if, you, if, 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 if uh, an abatement of $1 million would provide tax relief, the question uh, of $70 million, a $1 million increase would provide you know, $70. So a $1 million increase would increase the taxes by about $70. You said what would be $70? Every, $1 million equals about $70 of annual taxes to a $400,000 homeowner. So if we didn't take if you did, if you did, yeah, yeah, because yeah, if, if if you don't take the tax, if you do, if you don't do the tip, then 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 and, and spread out seventy three million dollars amongst the new tax tax base, which includes the tip now, then that would lower everybody's taxes. Situation that you're in, because no, ideally you don't you don't raise taxes. You could address your capital projects without issuing debt, and you could keep your capital and you could keep your programs and staffing. But mathematically, that, that can't work. 
you could you could reduce expenditures and look for efficiencies, and, I, and we've talked about that as, as as that needs to be a goal going forward in all areas, for sure. But mathematically, um, it, it, it just it, it it doesn't work. But so after this year, I, I mean the, the big the big issue this year is is this tip and this and this opportunity, and it's an opportunity, and I get that it's an opportunity. Uh, for the school district to, 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 to generate money to address its capital projects, and I also get that it's a unique opportunity to lower taxes in the community. So it's, it's, it's definitely a fair, um, a, a reasonable uh, disagreement or, or a discussion. Um, I, I guess the, the um, you know, but, 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 that, but that's, the, you know, that's, that, that's what makes this a tough issue. But after this year, and, and but for this, we would be talking about historically below average CPI increases um, every year un unless the district went for referendum. So 1.9 this year, right now it's trending about 1.7 uh, CPI for this year, but there's still a couple, you know, there's still uh, the December number to come out. Um, but, but that would be the type of increase. So even after this year, whatever, whatever you agree upon, the growth is gonna be CPI. That, that, that you, even if you wanted to go higher than that, you can't go higher than that without going to referendum. So that's the type of growth that, that people in the community will be dealing with as it relates to this um, District 97. The only, only, only taxing entity, as I know, that's on, your, on the tax bill that's not subject to CPI growth is the village, because right. they're a home rule unit. Right. But, but the high school, and, and I believe Everyone most of, or not, most, not everybody else is, at, is, is a CPI type of growth. But, but, I, but I also do get that it's starting with the, with the high base and, and, and there's a lot of challenges related to that. It, yeah, everything you say I think is, is right on with, with the added amount to just when you talk about trying to find efficiencies, I just want to make it very clear that we've been trying to find efficiencies and finding efficiencies yeah. for a number of years. Now. Right. So it's not as if we- I know that when we went to the budget like, process hey, this whatever, year. you know, for sure. whatever you want. Right. Like there's been a lot of effort to reduce oh, expenses yeah. and to find efficiencies and in addition to that, there have been um, major efforts on our part to explore other uh, ways to reduce expenses that were met with much, much larger resistance than, uh, than we're facing. And, it, and it's also difficult to reduce expenditures when there's new initiatives going into a school district as well, you know, that, which is, you know, that every year all school districts are, are having a more and more um, issues that, that, that have to be addressed within the budgets, which makes it more challenging. But it doesn't stop the process, and I, and I know that the board has a commitment to examine the process going forward. Right. I think as a board member, um, you know, reading the emails, reading the, the articles, uh, everything that we've experienced being so new has been um, very eye-opening. Um, the one thing that I wish the, the public, the voters would get to know, and a lot of people talk about we're not experiencing this and, you know, we don't feel the impact. We live in Oak Park. We feel the impact. Our kids are in school just like your kids or your grandkids or your neighbors are in school. Um, none of us want to leave Oak Park. None of us want to, um, we're, we're all in this together, basically. We feel the same impact. We're not from some mountaintop making these decisions. We fully understand the impact of this. Um, it's been a very hard decision. I've learned more about school finance than I ever would have thought. Um, had very long conversations with uh, former board members to get a historical knowledge about this. Um, the, the fact of bringing up another referendum, I wasn't on the board, but I remember seeing the comments. I remember the backlash. I remember the people who did not get voted in because they supported the referendum. So, um, you know, you want, you want to be fiscally responsive, responsible. I don't want to be on the board and have to leave because I can't afford to live here anymore. I have three small kids in the Longfellow District. Um, I know all of us have kids who are on the board. We all feel the pressure. Um, none of us by any means are billionaires. We all have jobs um, and responsibilities. And so um, I appreciate everybody who came and spoke today, especially those who you know, took into consideration the hard decision that this is for us. Um, but I think there's just a lot to consider. I thank you, Rob, for all of the work that you've done over the past month.
months of um, trying to take something very complex and make it simple so that I can understand. Um, everybody who's been on the board, who's been, you know, uh, giving us what we need in order to even be at this point today. Um, yeah, so it's a, it's a very hard decision, and I don't think it's one that any of us take lightly. Ray Meyer? Yes. Carney? Yes. Kim? Can I ask a point of clarification? Are we voting on the whole lobby? Is that including the TIF? I'm confused. Mm -hmm. No, it is. Can I, can I amend? Like, sorry, I don't understand the process for this, but if I wanted to only take the 3 million and not the full 5.3, do I vote no? Yes, you vote no. Right? Yes. Spurlock? Yes. Moore? No. Liebel? Yes. 